Good morning. What it do? What it do on my crew? Good morning. Friday morning, guys. We made it through another week of quarantine. Whoop, whoop. Come on in. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, Brittany. What's up, what's up? Cameron, what's up? Hey, Emily, good morning. What it do, all my crew? Mary, what's up? <clears throat> it is Friday morning. Good morning, good morning. Have you guys had your coffee? Are you excited for some encouragement? Because today... I want to encourage you with something that could shift the rest of your quarantine time, however long that may be, right? Who knows? Anybody have any predictions? Good morning, Carrie. Good morning, Amber. Hey, Kevin. What's up? What's up, guys? Hey, hey, everybody. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Do you have your coffee? Have you been spending time just kind of in the word this morning? Hey, Kelsey, what's up? Maybe you're just waking up. Um, it is pouring down rain here in Florida. Pouring down rain, guys. Um, I am sharing this real quick. It is pouring down rain here in Florida. I had to walk over to the church, which is right next door, and um, had to literally run. I didn't walk today. I ran because it is pouring down. Having coffee now, ready for my unfiltered dirt pep talk. Yes, if you haven't shared this, share it. We are talking today about two dirty words, okay? Two dirty words, which are habits and mindsets. Nobody wants to talk. Let, let's just get real. Nobody wants to talk about this stuff, habits and mindsets. But I want to encourage you and challenge you today because this can change your the rest of your quarantine time. However, you've been using it. Guys, I just got to be really real. I've been using my quarantine time with lots of rest and um, hey, hey, everyone, Miriam, Sydney, what's up, Lisa? Hey, hey, um, Deborah, hey, what's up? Good morning, Amber. Um, I've been using it with lots of rest, lots of Netflix, lots of coffee, lots of junk food. Can we just talk about the weight we are gaining on quarantine? Is it just me? Or, or can y'all give me a heart party and let me know that your girl is not alone with the extra, um, I guess we should say hibernation pounds because I feel like we've been hibernating in our houses and I just feel like I keep eating everything in the cupboard, everything in the fridge I'm eating. I I'm eating even when I'm not hungry, I'm eating. I'm eating just to fill space in my life because I'm bored. Can we just talk about that for a minute? You're clean eating, oh my gosh, cheers. Cheers to you. I just got back onto my eating habits before quarantine. Um, two days ago I started and can I just say it's not been, <sighs> it's not been easy. When you've got truckloads of frozen pizza in the freezer and a whole lot of cereal in the pantry because you know, that just sounds better than clean eating, right? What's up, Megan? What's up, everybody? Well, hey, if you haven't already shared this, if you don't know who I am, my name's Alyssa Holt. I'm here for unfiltered chats with you. I come on here three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I encourage you guys, we talk about all of the dirt, and on this channel, we celebrate each other's dirt. We celebrate the fact that we are screwed up, we are flawed, we are messed up, we're trying to get our lives together every single morning. And so here I am on a Friday morning saying cheers to my crew. I screwed up this week and I'm trying again today and I am here to encourage you to do the same. We're talking about two dirty words today. This is your 30 minute wake up call. What about our habits and our mindsets during quarantine. Can we talk about that? Because here's the thing. Most of us are dealing with the struggle of we feel like we've kind of lost our why. We've kind of lost our purpose during this quarantine. 
Um, let me just talk about that for a second. A lot of people have been messaging me in the last week or so saying, Alyssa, I feel like I have no purpose, no promise, no, no why, why to get up out of bed, why to get ready, why to take a shower, why to keep going, why to keep doing my routines. I feel like my whole why has been squashed during quarantine because I was a teacher and now I'm not able to go to school and teach my kids like I want to or um, I was a health coach and now I'm not able to meet with my clients or I was in ministry and I'm not able to see my people that I pour into. I'm not able to travel. Me and Brandon literally had, um, had let's see, a full schedule all the way through June where almost every week was booked. We were going to be on the road traveling and doing these worship concerts and speaking into people's lives and consulting and pouring into people and training people. And we were going to be traveling all over to do it. And all of a sudden in five days, in five days, Everything canceled on us. Everything shut down. All of the people we were supposed to be worshiping with, writing with, um, pouring into, consulting, training, it shut down. And it's real easy right now during quarantine to feel like you've lost your why. You've lost your purpose. You've lost your motivation. You've lost your reason to get up in the morning. We're secluded. We're stuck in the house now. Hear me out. Hey, June. Um, hear me out, okay? Not everybody is blessed enough to stay inside of our houses, okay? So can we just give a heart party to all of the essential workers out there that are still getting their butts up out of bed in the middle of COVID-19 and are still going to work and still doing this thing and still, you know, serving the community and doing their job? Can we just give a quick shout out to all of the people that are working in the hospitals, the grocery stores, all of the stuff, right, that, that we are blessed to stay home and maybe you aren't getting paid for your job, okay? I'm right there with you. I come on this channel three times a week for 30 um, wait, thirty minute wake up calls three times a week with you guys, unfiltered chats. I don't get paid a dime for what I do. I do it because this is my passion. This is my purpose. Me and Brandon go on twice a week for worship. We don't get paid for what we do on live social media. We just do it because it's our passion, right? But thank you to all of the essential workers out there that are still busting their butts, going out there, you know, um, having to stay safe and are still working to serve us, right? So not everybody is like blessed to be able to stay home. But for those of us who are home, the, those of us who are stuck inside the four walls of our house, those of us who can't get out as much as we want to get out, can we talk about the fact that we feel like we have lost our purpose? Anybody else there with me? Because give me a fist bump. Give me a heart party. Guys, this week has been tough for me. It has been tough for me. And so I want to get on today and talk about two dirty words, habits and mindsets, because this is going to change the rest of your quarantine time if you hear what I have to say, okay? Um, I have been struggling with, I am not a person where I like to stay in one spot for an extended amount of time. Me and my husband, we travel. We're full-time ministers that travel um, we're not called to a specific church. We're called to the church, if that makes sense. So we are constantly traveling to different churches, training people, pouring into people, doing worship concerts, doing um, women's conferences that I do. You know, he does consulting. We're constantly traveling. And so to stay in one spot is very difficult. Anybody else out there, it's tough for you to stay in one spot or are you like that homebody where staying in one spot is like really your, it's your cozy place, it's your happy place, you love it. Um, for me, it's been difficult and this week has been so frustrating for me because I started thinking about all of the places we were supposed to be this month and all of the places we were supposed to be gearing up for next month and I started to get really like 
really discouraged in the fact that all of those lives we were supposed to be pouring into, it came to a screeching halt, right? And so what I want to talk about today is the fact that your purpose is not found in what the world can offer you. Your purpose is not found in what your job can offer you. Your purpose is found in yourself. It is found from within. It is found with what you can give yourself, with what you believe about yourself and how you create with this life that you have on a daily basis, regardless of what job you have, regardless of where you go every day to do that thing that you love so much. This life, quarantine really has given us a gift. Okay, it's given us a gift and um, the gift is when you are home, you're able to own your now. If you are stuck at home right now in quarantine, congratulations, cheers to you. Your gift is that you are able to own your right now in ways that you have not been able to own it in a while. Okay, let's just get real about it. You're able to um, sit back and deal with yourself for once without the busyness of life. And I know that's not always fun. I know it's not always exciting, which is why we avoid it most of the time. When does pre-ordered books get mailed? Um, I just did a story. You guys, check out my stories. Jump onto my online, uh, my lives and stuff. I've been talking about this. I'm so excited about it. Pre-orders have not gone out because I had to order a huge bulk order of books. Huge. Um... And so because of that, the shipping slowed down, COVID-19 slowed down the shipping. I have not received the bulk order of books yet. They're supposed to be here by the beginning of next week. So I am super excited, you guys. I have literally sold out of every single copy that we ordered in bulk. That included all of the pre-orders and we ordered a ton more for extras. Well, guys, all of those extras sold out. You guys are the bomb dot com you went online I sold out of all of the extras so when that bulk order hits my doorstep the beginning of next week I'm signing every last copy of my book packaging them and mailing them out to you guys um, the beginning of May give me a second that's a whole lot of books I've got to sign package and deliver so um, but that's what's up with the pre-orders the reason why we went ahead and um, released the Kindle book and the Amazon paperback was because of the fact that the bulk order was taking so long to get here. I didn't want with quarantine. I'm like, you know what? We can't just sit on this book. People are sitting at home. They need this book. This is prime time to release it. So we went ahead and released it. But pre-order people, you're getting a free gift in the mail from me for waiting. So just be patient. I'm so sorry. I hate it. I had to order my own book on Amazon to go ahead and get it because I was waiting for my copy with y'all's copy and I was like I need a book right now so I went and paid for my own book on Amazon <laughs> so I could get it right now so yay I'm super excited to send it to you guys as well so quarantine's given us a gift guys we have the ability to acknowledge our dirt we have the ability to acknowledge our dirt in ways that we haven't been able to, may not have been able to have the space and the time to do it because of how busy life is and our jobs and our kids and our stuff. Clara, go to my website, um, www.brandonandalyssa.life forward slash store. It's linked to this post. Um, so... And then if you're at work, you know, quarantine has given you the gift of being stable financially because a lot of us at home right now who are sitting here um, kind of doing our own thing, we're not able to receive the paychecks that we were receiving prior to quarantine. So either way, you are blessed right now. Quarantine is not this horrible thing that we can just sit down on and be like, oh my gosh. Listen, guys, the news, I believe the news fluffs things up. Now, I do have friends. I have family and friends who have tested positive, positive for COVID-19. And maybe you have family and friends who have tested positive for COVID-19. Now, 
I am blessed enough to say none of my family or friends have um, died because of COVID-19. They all recovered and some of them are still in recovery. Um, maybe that's not your story. Maybe you've suffered loss. Maybe you've suffered grief. Maybe this thing has hit your family in a way that was very personal. And um, so you're like, Alyssa, how is this a blessing? This is not a blessing. And, and for those of you who are going through that, I want to say that we have been praying for you. We have been lifting you up. We have been um, praying for our nation right now and all of the stuff that we are going through. But for those of us who are just sitting around and aren't directly affected by this and we're just sitting down on time, I want to encourage you today with habits and mindsets because this is prime time right now to get a hold of some things in your life instead of just waiting, right? Your destiny isn't isn't like far off in the future, right? Your destiny is right now. It's not waiting for you to become a perfect person. It's not waiting for you to figure out your entire life. It's not waiting for all of the pieces to fall in place. Your destiny is waiting for you to make a decision to start right now. Go ahead and drop it in the comments. Say start right now. You guys pump share on this post. We are fixing to jump in to what I want to talk about today, 30 minutes of your wake up call today on a Friday. And if you guys listen to me, this is going to change your life if you grab a hold of it. How do I know that? Because I've done it. I've practiced it. I've practiced not doing it and I've practiced doing it. Okay. And, um, Lots of people, they're messaging me right now saying that seclusion is forcing them to confront things that are really hard to confront. Confront the fact that they are alone. Confront the fact that they're going through a divorce. Confront the fact that they feel rejected. Confront the fact that they've gone through abuse. Confront the fact that they are without a job. Quarantine is allowing us to confront a whole lot of stuff. And I want to encourage you today with the fact that you're not being held back from your destiny. Your decisions are what are holding you back. Do you hear what I'm saying? You are not being held back from your destiny. Your decisions are what are holding you back from your destiny. Your tragedy isn't the issue. Your thoughts are the issue. And this is prime time. Hey, Lydia. This is prime time for you to get your thoughts under control so that when life opens back up and we aren't like stuck on lockdown and life isn't weird and the world starts operating the way that it's supposed to operate again, we will have our minds right to actually own our life in the way that we haven't owned our lives in a long time. Maybe you've been sitting down on dreams. Maybe you've been sitting down on ideas. Maybe you've been sitting down on talents. Maybe you've been sitting down on different things that you've been neglecting because you felt like it wasn't the right time. Guys, right now is the right time. You only have one life. I heard this all the time when I was a teenager. It got on my last nerve. You only have one life. Live it to the fullest. And I always thought to myself, what is that? You know, like I'm never going to die. When you're younger, you feel like I'm never going to die. I've got my whole life in front of me. Guess what? Today is your moment. Stop sitting down on your destiny. Stop waiting for somebody to do something for you. Stop waiting for that connection to finally come into your life and hand you your dreams on a silver platter. Stop waiting for that person to come into your life and validate all of your dreams. You don't need anybody to validate your dreams, your gifts, your talents, your ideas. You are your biggest advocate. You are the one that has to make a decision to actually do the thing that you feel like you're supposed to do with your life. And nobody else can do it for you. And so, so much of our why and purpose and passion is built on what others say. It's built on what the world can bring us, right? And quarantine has brought us face to face with the fact that we're alone. We're alone with our close circle of human beings, guys. Can we just talk about that real quick? I am ready to just go away and lock myself in a room by myself without little kids knocking on my door. I cannot pee by myself. I cannot breathe by myself. I cannot sleep by myself. My kids are right there up underneath me 24-7. Um, it is a real struggle for all of the parents in the house. Um, give me a heart party because you know the struggle is very real. You are stuck in four walls with human beings that are not always around you 24 hours. You're stuck alone 
with your mind and your thoughts and you're away from the world, you're away from your jobs, you're away from your platforms, you're away from your purpose, your why, that thing that drove you every day to get out of bed. And all of a sudden now the world is shut down and we don't have gigs, we don't have things to do, we don't have jobs to work, we don't have people to connect with, right? And so we're stuck with our humans or you're by yourself and your thoughts. That's what you're stuck with right now. And so I want to talk about why habits are super vital right now because your reality may be different, but your routine can be the same. Your reality may be different, but your routine can be the same. Guys, here's what I know, okay? You want to know what I know? Your mind, your mind is hardwired to see habits from what you've gone through in the past and it recognizes that. So this is what I mean by that. When you go back into a place of seclusion and you're sleeping in every day and you're not showering and you're not getting ready and you don't have a routine because our lives look different now, your brain is hardwired to take you back to a place of your past. It recognizes what it knows. So right now in quarantine, I struggled with feeling depressed. Anybody else struggled with feeling depressed during quarantine, feeling anxiety during quarantine, feeling alone during quarantine, feeling like you are going stir crazy during quarantine? Give me a heart party because I know I cannot be the only one, right? The reason why I struggled with being depressed was because I wasn't getting out of bed. I wasn't taking showers and getting dressed every day. I wasn't um, getting out of bed during the mornings like I used to and making breakfast for the kids and doing my thing throughout the day. I wasn't going to bed at a normal time, right? So your brain is hardwired to take you back to a place of your past because it recognizes what it knows And if you are not maintaining your routine during quarantine, you have to maintain a routine during quarantine. I just came up with that right now. (coughs) Then your brain is going to go, oh my gosh, I'm depressed. Oh my gosh, I'm in seclusion. Oh my gosh, I remember that time I went through divorce and I couldn't get up out of bed. I remember that time I was abused and I couldn't I couldn't get ready. I remember that time I wasn't eating right because um, of that tragedy. I was going through that trauma that I went through. Your brain recognizes what it knows. So if you do not maintain a routine right now, guys, you are going to find yourself slipping into being what they say, stir crazy, depressed. You're going to start having anxiety. You're going to start feeling like you're losing your why. You're going to start feeling like you have no passion for life. You have no purpose for life. You're going to get all up in your feels and feel like you're only but you're alone and by yourself and you're the only one that feels this way, right? And so you have to maintain a routine right now, guys. You have to maintain crew. I need you to listen to me. Like this is prime time for you to maintain a routine in your life so that your brain doesn't recognize this as trauma and tragedy and it doesn't go into this place of deep depression and anxiety, right? Your brain will slip you right back into the past and then all of a sudden, all of those thoughts of that trauma and that place that you neglected and did not approach and did not address and you've shoved it under the rug, all of those feelings that you've not dealt with, that church hurt, that abuse, that relationship that failed, that thing that didn't work out, that business idea that flopped, that gig that went horribly, that person that said your talent was not enough, all of those thoughts are going to start flooding in and the next thing you know, you're going to end up in a bad place in your mind, right? And so I built my life, you know, uh, the reason why I get on here is because, guys, my habits were not built during the good times of my life. My habits were built during the literal hell of my life. I had somebody once, can we, this is unfiltered chat, so welcome to my page. The name is Alyssa Holt, and we talk about all the dirt, so get ready for it. Confession time. Um, Here we go at 1030 in the morning, confession time. I had somebody message me once and tell me how wrong I was for sharing positivity about people getting out of their mud and their dirt, and how I needed to stop giving people false hope 
for being able to get up out of their dirt because I don't know what it's like to truly live in the depths of tragedy. And that the way that I am and the way that I um, show myself on social media, there's no way that I've truly gone through anything deep enough to truly help people. And what my response to them was, you never saw me on the nights that I sat on the side of my bed with a gun in my hand. You never saw me on the nights where my husband was out all night long, my husband of 10 years, and I didn't know where he was or who he was with. And yet I had to lay there with tears streaming down my face saying nothing but the name of Jesus. That's all I knew to do was to just lay there and say the name of Jesus because my mind had no peace. I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't think at night. I didn't know what to do with myself. You weren't with me when I was laid up in the hospital bed with my husband right now as we were trying trying to find a way to have a baby as we're walking through infertility right now. You weren't with me three days ago when I took that, took that pregnancy test and it was negative just three days ago. And I was still on here with you guys 30 minutes after I took that test and still spoke life into you, still told you that your destiny is not behind you. It's ahead of you still told you that you can grab a hold of the thing that you want for your life right now, no matter what it is you're dealing with. You don't see me when I'm dealing with the suicidal thoughts and the anxiety and the things and the tragedy and the hurt and the pain. You're not with me during those moments. But can I tell you something? Those moments don't define me. Listen to me. Your dirt does not define you. Your destiny was written in your dirt before you ever had a chance to be clean. I can take a pregnancy test just three days ago that's negative for the thousandth time. We're coming up on our two-year mark of infertility, not having a baby, and I can still get on here with you even though I had a moment of crying in the bathroom and feel like God is not hearing me and God is not with me and I don't understand and why he's making me wait and I can still get on here with you and I can still look you in the eyeballs through this screen right here and tell you that God is a God who keeps promises that God is not going to fail you that he hasn't left you that he hasn't forsaken you that your destiny is not behind you it's in front of you that you can determine to take control of this right here and you can become the person that God has called you to be, regardless of the things that fell in your life, regardless of the things that aren't working in your life, regardless of the things that may not seem right in your life, regardless of the questions, regardless of the answers you're not getting, regardless of the pain you're trudging through, regardless of all of the, the and ifs or buts that you wake up with every morning, you can still Grab a hold of destiny, even when you're walking through the dirt. Well, how can you say that? Because I just went through a massive letdown three days ago. I peed on a stick for the thousandth time. And guess what? One evil line was still looking me in the face. But God, I'm still dealing with my stuff, just like you're still dealing with your stuff. And I'm still here three times a week to look you in the face and tell you that God is still a good God. And he still has a plan for your life, even when you don't understand it. Quarantine is going to make you or break you in many ways. And some of us aren't, some of us aren't blessed enough to stay home and work through the junk. Some of us aren't blessed enough to be able to seclude ourselves and just have this time alone with God during this time and being safe and making memories with your family and sorting through the issues, right? Some of us are still out there, the essential workers that are still busting their butts and working and getting paid. God bless the fact that they still are getting a stable paycheck, right? But for those of us that are inside of our houses, don't waste this space by sitting down in your thoughts and allowing your feels to control your environment. Do you hear me? Stop allowing your feels to control your environment. I didn't build my habits in the good times of my life. I'm building still my habits during the dirt of my life. You know, when I got that negative pregnancy test the other day, what did I do? I went and I did my habits. I did my habits. I got my journal out. I did my four steps. I want to talk about it real quick because here's your thing. This is what is going to make or break you right now. Okay. Keep your habits 
Keep your routines right now. Your mind is going to recognize what it knows. If you're laid up in bed and you're not getting ready during your day because you have nowhere to go, if you're not maintaining some kind of normal routine, you are going to find yourself confronting things that you've been avoiding for a long time and you're not going to be strong enough to actually combat that with the truth of God's word. You're going to allow your feels and depression and anxiety and issues to overwhelm you in such a way that it's going to be paralyzing. Do you hear me? Get up out of your bed, get dressed, Maintain some kind of routine despite what this nation looks like right now, despite what your life looks like right now, because your daily routine during this time is what's going to keep you sane. It's what's going to help you work through the issues in your life. And I want to encourage you to start doing your journaling. Guys, If it weren't for this journal, not this specific one, but this journaling routine that I have practiced since the time I was 14 years old, I can I think that God has blessed me to go through tragedy just so I can look you guys in the face and give you proof that I walk this out by example. I don't walk this out just to be cute and to be on a screen and to get some shares and likes. I am passionate about this because I know what it feels like to be alone in my mind and feel like nobody understands the hurt that I'm going through, the trauma that I'm going through, the pain that I'm going through, and not knowing how to navigate through those areas. God graced me with an ability to navigate through the pain in such a way that I said and I determined in my life, I will not, I refuse to allow every bit of pain to go to waste. Every bit of my pain, I am going to shove in the face of everybody by sharing my dirt. Good morning, Melody. And I am going to allow you to see that no matter what it is you are going through, I've been there and I want to help you because Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. And you are not alone. He is with you every step of the way. And you've got a community you can come to right here that celebrates each each other's dirt. That actually gives each other the ability to say, I'm screwed up. I've got issues. I don't know what to do. I don't know what the next step is. It's okay to not be okay. I just cussed my husband out. I just had a crazy screaming fit. I just had a throw down with my kids. I just broke some stuff. I am having issues. And guess what? It's okay. We're going to celebrate each other's dirt with each other because that is a problem with the church. The church has not created a safe environment for us to be able to feel like we can talk about the real life things we're feeling without being told that we're not in faith and we don't um, trust in our God to get us through. This is what I'm here to do. I'm here to give you a safe space to feel all of the things you are feeling, but I'm also here to look you in the face and kick you in the behind with my words by saying it is not okay for you to remain in the same place. You may be feeling what you're feeling and I'm going to give you that space to feel what you are feeling. But once you felt what you're feeling, I'm here to tell you to get up off of the ground, put your big girl or big boy panties on and make a decision that you're not going to allow your destiny to be something you never grab a hold of because you can't get your thought life right. Your thought life can be controlled by you. It's not controlled by all of the people and all the tragedy and all of the things that you're going through. Your thought life is controlled by you. That person that destroyed you is not the one that's keeping you held back. You are holding yourself back by not getting your mind right. Do you hear me? And I'm not saying this from a place of of La La Land. I'm saying this because I've been there, honey. I've done that. I've got the t-shirt. I wear the badge. I've laid down in the mud. I have made a bed out of the broken memories of my life. I have laid there. I lived there for 13 years of my life. I laid in anorexia. For 13 years of my life, I laid in bulimia. For 13 years of my life, I laid in the fact that I am rejected. I am alone. I am a victim of rape. Nobody will love me. And I was even married at the time. I got raped at 14, turned around and got married at 18 because I was trying to make up for this mindset of victim that I am abused and alone and not wanted. So I did what I needed to do to fill that void. And I still carried that mindset through my entire 10 years of marriage. 
Stop making excuses for the tragedy you were going through and start getting your thoughts right. This is the perfect time for it. And I want to give you four steps as I jump off of here because I don't want to be on here super long every time we get on here. This is your 30 to 40 minute pep talk, unfiltered chat with me. I want you to find a journal. I want you during this quarantine time to do four steps. I want you to get your mind right. I want you to start addressing some of the things that have been holding you back. And it's simple, guys. I want you to type the steps down below. The first thing you're going to do is read. These are four steps I came up with from the time I was 14 years old. I've been doing them almost every single day of my life in a journal. And most of the time I'm in my journal at least five times a week. Most of the time seven. Um, but I do these four steps. Write them down. Step one, read. This is what I like to call my personal development and discipleship time. My first personal development and discipleship time. I take 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. I don't know if that's backwards for y'all. 30 minutes a day. And I read something. I read personal development, which means any kind of book from any kind of person. It could be a religious book. It can be a personal development book. It could be an encouraging book. It can be something that is going to uplift me. And then I read the word. I get my personal development and I get my personal discipleship. So I do one of each of those. I don't have to read a ton of stuff. I may read a chapter of the Bible a day and I may, may read like two or three pages of a book a day. But I get some kind of personal development. I may just listen to a podcast while I'm in the shower, right? But either way, I get personal development and personal discipleship. When I read it, I find something that sticks out to me that is talking to me and I write down the thing that I read that is what I like to call my rhema word. Rhema means living word. It means what spoke out to you the most. So under number one read, I write down number one in my journal every day. This is what helps me get through my life and is what's going to help you get through this as well. I write down what I read that stuck out to me the most. What did I read that helped me today. I write it down. The second step, write it down, is repeat. Repeat. There are four R's that I live by every single day that I want to help you with today to help you get through this time of quarantine. Read, repeat. What I do is I say with my mouth what that word was that stuck out to me in the chapter of the Bible that day, right? So I write down at least one verse that stuck out to me for number one. And then number two, I repeat it. I say it out loud. I say it out loud because there's something about saying it out of my mouth, hearing it with my ears. Because what you say, you will hear. And what you hear, you will believe. Right? Your words have power. Your words can speak life or death. And what your ears hear, your mind will take in and your heart will start to believe it. That's why it's so important to know what you are speaking over yourself. Good morning, Stacy. What are you speaking life or death over your destiny, over your purpose, over your life, over your person, over your family, over your kids, over your situation? What you speak is what you're, you'll hear and your mind will absorb it and you will begin to believe it. And Matthew 9 says what you believe you will become. So whatever you believe you will become. You will begin to mirror that thing. So I read something. I write down what stuck out to me and I speak it out of my mouth so my ears can hear it. My mind can take it in and my heart can believe it. Number three, what I do in my journal every single day since the time I was 14 is respond. Read, repeat, respond. Write it down in the comments. Respond. What I do with this is I write down the lie. I write down the lie. Why I feel like this word that has stuck out to me, how is it relating to my life right now? Why did it stick out to me? Obviously, it stuck out to me because it relates to me somehow. What's the lie that I've been believing? What is the lie that I've been believing about this verse? Why it cannot happen for me? Why do I feel this way? In my book, I give you guys confession and truth at the end of every chapter. Okay, so let me show you. At the end of every chapter, I give you a confession and I give you a truth. And that's what respond really is. It's my confession. Why do I feel like this scripture isn't going to work for me? And then number four, I write react. 
Number four is react. So read, repeat, respond, react. So I wrote the lie. I wrote the confession of why I feel like that scripture is not going to work for me. Now I want to react by replacing it with the truth. What does the truth of God's word say about this? Why does he say this is mine? How can I rep- apply it? How can I react to this lie by applying it to my life? How can I how can I incorporate this in my life? Now you've got to figure that out. You've got to figure out how you can react to it. So for instance, if I 3 days ago I took another pregnancy test and it was negative. True story, right? This is my confession for the day. That day I wrote down in my journal another test is another test is negative but then my react was I am not moved but by what I see feel or hear I'm moved only by the word of God today I'm going to read scriptures on how my womb is blessed on how my family is blessed how we have been commanded to be fruitful and multiply how God's God's promise to me is not barrenness God's promise to me is that my husband is not barren God's promise to me is that my husband is not going to have a son God's promise is that we are fruitful and that we will multiply and I will speak that over my life That's what I'm going to do every single day is speak such and such scripture over my life. And I wrote it down. So these are simple things I want you to work through during quarantine. I want you to get back into a daily habit because your mind is going to recognize what it's been through. Right. So get up, do something that you would typically do during a normal day so that your mind can get itself right. And I want you to do the four steps of journaling every single day. You're going to read personal development and discipleship. You're going to repeat what stuck out to you in the word of God. So your ears can hear it. Your mind can absorb it. Your heart can believe it. You're going to respond by sorting through why you feel like that doesn't work for you. Because there's something about confessing the things that you're going through so that you can truly work through the thoughts. And you're going to react to it by combating it with the truth of what God's word is. How are you going to apply it to your everyday life? Write it down. React to it and live it out that day. Listen, guys, I don't know um, if you've been feeling like me lately. I feel like I've been failing in a lot of areas, but today's a new day. You got through this week. You got through last week. You got through the week before, and you're going to get through tomorrow. So just be encouraged Your life is not over. It's just getting into order. And God has a great big plan for you. Okay? If you want another tool to sort through some dirt in your life, you can always go check out my book. I have more copies coming in. Now listen, I sold out of the first bulk order that's coming in the beginning of the week. I'll be signing every last 150 copies of this book and mailing them out, but I've already ordered another bulk order. So if you want a signed copy, go check it out on my website, www.brandonandalyssa.life. I will sign those. Those will be coming in next week as well. So we're going to have more books next week. Um, Be mailing them out. We've got it on Amazon, the paperback. We've got it on Kindle, the electronic book. This is a great way to walk through your dirt, embrace your destiny, deal with promise, trauma, hurt, pain, how we navigate through all of that. And then, of course, we've always got um, cool gear if you want some destiny is written in your dirt we've got that on the website we've also got the regular unfiltered shirt here um and we've got music we've got seven albums of music and uh we've also got piano lessons and all kinds of stuff and i want to go ahead and announce really quickly Brittany mason Brittany mason i don't know if you're on here but you won the free Um, gift that I was giving away yesterday for people writing their reviews. I know that it's not something fun you want to ask for, but if you have read my book, I want to, I want to encourage you to go to Amazon, write your review, submit your review on what you thought, how it helped your life. People do notice those things. They want to read the reviews. I appreciate every review that's been written so far. Um, it just means the world to me. You guys have been inboxing me so much with testimonies and just what God is doing in your life. People who have been dealing with, um, healing from family members committing suicide and spouses walking out on them 
them and people dying in their lives and um, church hurt, just different things. And I just love the testimonies. If you guys will go write them on the Amazon page, submit your review. That would mean the world to me. But Brittany Mason, you won seven free albums of worship music from my husband, Brandon Holt. I'm going to send you the link so you can get all of that. Um, I just appreciate it. I love you guys. I will be on here tomorrow night with Brandon um, for worship on his page, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come hang out with us. Come worship with us. We worship twice a week. Um, give you guys some atmosphere. Um, love you too, girl. And um, also, we will be... Um, releasing some really exciting things. You guys stay tuned. Good Lord Almighty. It is the time for really cool things. My goodness, I'm so excited. Um, I will have soon and very soon an announcement about when my audiobook will be out. And we have got some really exciting news coming up with um, original music from BNA. So you need to be keeping an eye out for that. No, this is not somebody else's songs. It's our songs, and we're really excited. This has been a long time coming. Two years. We're coming up on our two-year uh, anniversary on Monday, and I'm really excited to be able to say we are fixing to record our first single, and we've got more songs following it. So, guys, keep your eyes peeled. Lots of exciting things are coming, and um, we'll talk to you guys soon. Join us tomorrow for worship on Brandon's page. I will see you guys Monday for another unfiltered chat and a 30-minute wake-up call. This one was a little bit longer, but I think we all needed it, right? Okay, love you guys. Be blessed. Talk to y'all later.